Hi, I'm Tessa and welcome to Little Lady Homestead. I just can't believe that it is the end of February, but it is spring. It is like 65 degrees today and the chickens are laying just basketfuls of eggs. And I've started to think about the chickens that I'm going to buy for this year. If you saw my previous video on my favorite chicken breeds, then you'll know that I'm pretty happy with the flock of laying hens that I have. I have a wide variety of breeds that I really like for their temperament and their size and their egg production. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it above so you can go back and watch it. But for now, I'm thinking about the future of my flock and how I will maintain my numbers and my egg production moving forward. Laying hens start to lose production when they turn about two years old. And right now, the bulk of my chickens are less than two years old. My, let's see, most of them are about one year old to about six months old. I have a few that are over two years old now. And that is going to be a problem that I'm going to have to figure out what to do <laughs> about. Once my chickens reach two years old, and maybe even after that too, once their egg production starts slowing down or stops, I'm going to have to decide what I'm going to do if I'm going to be the lady with 500 chickens or if maybe they'll be stew hens. I'm not quite sure. Thankfully, I'm not there yet. But I do want to continue to get new chicks every year so that I maintain about 25 to 30 laying hens. Turkey, no! Turkey, no! <laughs> <laughs> I want to maintain about 25 to 30 laying hens that are at peak production. Hi, Tuna. So with that in mind, I do want to get chicks every year so that I maintain that number and that egg production. But this year, thankfully, I don't think I'm going to buy any chicks at the hatchery or <laughs> at the store. I have my 27 hens and my one rooster. So fingers crossed, I will be able to raise my own barnyard chicks this year. And thankfully I do have, let's see if she's here. I have Bruda back here. She is my buff Orpington and she is constantly broody in the summer. So I'm hopeful that she will be able to help me incubate and raise those eggs and babies. And I won't have to buy any laying hens this year. But laying hens aren't the only chickens that I raise on our homestead every year. I raise meat chickens every year, or at least I started last year, and it's my goal to continue raising them. And part of my homestead goals for this year was to raise at least 104 meat chickens so that we would have <laughs> so that we would have two meat chickens per week to eat for our family. We may even need to increase that to three chickens that we'll eat per week because my kids are growing and they eat a lot. <laughs> Four kids, it's like feeding an army. So we are going to be raising a lot of meat birds this year. I've already ordered my first batch of chicks, my Cornish Cross meat chickens that are coming on March 6th and I ordered them from McMurray Hatchery. And so that will be my first batch. We plan on raising three different batches of meat chickens this year. And I'm going to buy at least 40 of them for each batch so that hopefully we hit that goal of 104 meat chickens for the year. And my second and third batch, I may even have to buy more depending on how many we'll eat each week. So fingers crossed, we improve our retention rate and we reduce our losses. We do plan to build a chicken tractor this year so that they are better protected from predators because that's how we lost the majority of our chicks last year because I wanted them to have a run kind of like my laying hen so that they could get as much green grass and exercise as possible but I think we're going to put them in a chicken tractor so they still get grass, they still get bugs to eat, but they're more enclosed and protected from those predators. In addition to those 40 Cornish cross chicks that I have coming the beginning of March, I also have 40 Delaware broilers coming at the end of March. And so over the past year, or at least since I ordered my first Cornish cross chicks, 
I have been thinking about whether I wanted to continue with the Cornish cross or if I wanted to figure out a more sustainable way of raising meat chickens. And Cornish crosses are a cross of a Cornish chicken and a rock chicken. And you can't just get a Cornish chicken and a rock chicken and uh, breed them to get Cornish crosses. They have been bred very specifically over many years to get the result that you get from the hatchery. So I can't just raise my own. I am stuck with buying them from a hatchery every year. I would like to raise my own chicks and have that steady access to them each year where I don't have to rely on buying them from the hatchery. So I have been looking into heritage breeds that I could get that have good meat quality. And I already have a lot of those chickens, like the Buff Orpingtons, uh, even these Morans I'm sure, sure would be great because they're just so big. Uh, but the thing is, is that they take a long time to mature and get to a big size that would be good for processing. And so I started looking into the breast chicken. I've heard a lot about the French breast chickens, that they have excellent, excellent meat quality. The flavor of the meat is far superior to the Cornish cross, which aims more to be tender and large with big um, white meat or a lot of white meat, but it doesn't have much flavor. It's the same chicken that we get at the grocery store. Now, something that takes longer to mature has more flavor, but it's not as tender. And I think I'm okay with that because I generally like to cook my chicken low and slow anyway. So if it's not as tender, I think that's okay. I think I would rather have it more, <laughs> I think I would rather have it have more flavor. So I started looking into the breast chickens with the great flavor and I almost took the leap, I think in fall of last year because there was a sale on them at a local hatchery. Well, kind of local, it's in North Carolina. But then I decided, no, I'm going to wait. I don't know if that's a venture I want to jump into. So I started thinking about it again uh, now in the last couple months and went on to look at those chicks again. Those chicks are $20 per chick, $20. And so if I wanted to start a breeding flock, I would probably want to get at least 20 and that would be $400 for those chicks, which is a little bit much and also it would just kill me I think to have those chicks if one of them died which is devastating enough that's twenty dollars right there plus the feed that you put into it so I think that's just too much and so then I did find on McMurray Hatchery they have the Delaware broilers and I found out that the Delaware chicken was actually used to be what Cornish Cross is now in most of the meat production chicken houses, they had Delaware chickens, but the Delaware broiler from McMurray, they specifically bred to mature a little bit faster and to have more meat on them, um, almost to the extent of Cornish crosses, but not quite. So they do take about 18 weeks to mature, but I can breed them. I can get 20 chickens, I can, uh, choose the 12 that I want to breed and then breed them and I'll still get eggs from the hens so I may not need to replace as many as my laying flock chickens and then I'll be able to hopefully use some of those buff warpingtons who get really broody or even I have an incubator I can hatch some of my own meat chickens and have that each year. So that is going to be an experiment. Like I said, I still got the Cornish crosses to start for the year, but then right after that, I ordered the Delaware broilers so that I can check on how much feed they consume. Is it a good return on investment for the amount of feed that can, they consume because they do take longer to mature? And what about the meat quality? Will I still get a good amount of meat for the feed that I put into them? So that'll be my experiment for the year to see, do I want to continue with Cornish crosses or do I want to take the leap into breeding my own Delaware broilers? I'm not buying any more laying hens and I will be buying my meat chickens. The only other thing that I will be buying, which isn't a chicken, but they're turkeys. <laughs> so we actually had a livestock auction here locally 
uh, last weekend or the weekend before. I think it was the weekend before. And I was hoping to find a tom turkey for my turkeys because I have two turkey hens and the three toms that I had were all picked up by hawks last year. So I was looking to get one. I didn't realize how expensive adult turkeys were. <laughs> so even at the livestock auction, they were going for 50 to $70 and that's not what I was looking to spend that weekend. So we didn't get one. And then of course, as fate has it, I went to Rural King to pick up a few things and I heard the chicks from the other side of the store and I thought they just got chicks in. I'm gonna go look to see what they have. And of course they had turkeys. So I went back there and they had a, a tub of specialty turkeys, which they, the person there, they almost never know anything about <laughs> the chicks that are there. But I asked what breed the turkeys were and she didn't know, it just said specialty. So I assumed that it was probably heritage breeds because the other tub were the double-breasted white turkeys. And so I figured the white ones in that tub were more than likely the Royal Palm, which are the which is the breed that I have here. So I took a chance. I got four of those Royal Palm turkeys and also their double-breasted white turkeys were on sale. Instead of $10, they were only five. So I got four of those as well. So now I have baby turkeys. I love turkeys so much and it was another goal of mine, not necessarily for this year, but I did really want to start raising our own turkeys because obviously we eat a lot of turkey too. So. We'll see, I've never processed a turkey before. We'll see how it goes. It's going to be harder. I love chickens just as much, but the meat chickens usually aren't as, they don't have as much personality, I guess. Or maybe I just didn't become as attached to my meat chickens as I did my laying hens. But it'll be hard for me not to become attached to the turkeys. So we'll see, I w I'm hoping for at least one Royal Palm Tom to keep, maybe even two and then the rest will probably process for meat. So these are my little turkey babies and they are in the garage right by the door that leads to our kitchen. So I get to hear them all the time because I love their little whistle. Ooh. And there are a couple that just throw themselves at me. It's okay. They are just the cutest little thing. Hi. So this is one of the white broad-breasted turkeys and he is really spunky. It just, he's always at the front <laughs> of the brooder, seeing what I have, seeing if I have food for him and always whistling. So far I can tell the white broad-breasted apart from the royal palm because these guys have kind of a tan head and then the royal palm have more of that highlighter yellowish white head. Are you falling asleep? These are just the cutest thing. You're so cute. All right, I'll let you get back in and get warm. Or maybe he's warm enough, he's just comfortable. So this year, hopefully I will be hatching my own laying chicks. I will be buying more Cornish cross chickens for meat birds. And also hopefully we may even start raising our own meat birds with the Delaware broilers. We'll see how it goes. I have turkeys that I am currently raising and they will be ready to process in July, but I'm hoping for a tom turkey to keep my two royal palm hens some company. And I also have another poultry order from a hatchery coming in April. They're not chickens and they're not turkeys, so you can guess what they are, but I'm so excited about them. I have been thinking about it for a long time. And so you'll see what those are in about two months. But other than that, I'm really excited to continue raising chickens this year. They really are one of my favorite animal. I also am very happy and proud that we are raising our own meat. So I'm hoping that we can create a process that's a little bit more sustainable to do that. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching Little Lady Homestead and I'll see you in my next video.